appreciate each and every one of y'all coming out and being here tonight. Uh, like Desiree said, this, I'm a full-time board. This is what I do after the last 10 years. I just recently uh, put out my third CD. Um, man, I just, I don't know, I don't know. I'm trying to get my commercials out the way. But uh, I, it's just a blessing, man, to be able to do what I do, travel the country and spread my, my ministry to good folks like y'all. So I'm going to go ahead and get right into it. Uh, y'all clap for everybody who took stage tonight, man. <laughs> Spots, like in the fourth, you know, the stage, it's like a box of chocolate, you never know what you're gonna hear. So, we got a little something, everything. And some of the things I'm gonna talk about is gonna kind of expound on what the other poets have talked about because I don't wanna do that because I can feed off the other poets, man. So, uh, the first poem I wanna do is uh, gotta let y'all know where I'm from. Uh, now, I go all over the country doing my spoken word, but people got a misconception about people from the South. You know, they got this terminology called Bama. So if you got a little twang in your voice, like, like when I go to DC, New York, they, 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 they quick to throw that shit out. So I had to write this poem, let them know where all this history, this culture really comes from. So this piece simply entitled Bama. It bothers me when I hear people fix their mouth and say, and they try to use the word Bama in a derogatory way. Now when they say in Bama, they say we're well, epitomized being black and from the South. I'll be that, but let me explain to you what being a Bama really about. You see, Alabama was known as the heart of Dixie, and what black folks always had in heart. I'm from Mobile down by the Bay, that was the main and order. And from Jim Crow to slavery, we carried too much of that water to be disrespected by the very people who supplied the fuels of our heart. They drink it from the well of freedom provided by our great grandmothers and fathers. Knowing the whole time it was a Bama that made life better for them, their sons, and their daughters. So when you hate on Alabama in the South, you really block it with your own blessings. Pete Gang, how are you going to give you a quick history lesson? Now, if you were black in this country, no matter where you're from, to some degree you always had an answer. But when cotton was king, Alabama was the castle. Federal land, Hope City, plus a whole bunch of slaves, so they made a square amount of money off that triangle trade. 1876 ended what they call post Civil War Reconstruction, last of the Union troops left the South, and the KKK went on a path of destruction. That sparked the first migration, an exodus. Blacks head toward the Mason Dixie line. Couldn't take the way they were being treated in the South, so they left everything they were loved and knew behind. The irony of the situation is, most of them got to know if I'm treated too much better. Disenfranchised, segregated, underpaid. Now they got to deal with their cold ass weather. <laughs> so eventually over time, in the South, what you pretty much had left was the strongest, most oppressed, hardest working people on this planet, searching for knowledge and work for self. They wanted us go to their colleges, so we started our own HBCU. This is the pain of our struggle with our Negro spirituals and created a new music called blues. It was Bama's like W.C. Handy that gave it to the world to use. Okay. They never understood the pain of our struggle till we made a scene and dance in our shoes. Then down in New Orleans, some old Bama types created jazz. And people never heard nothing like it before, and it spread around the world real fast. It had so much power, so much energy that anybody could feel it. Them scary Negroes that ran north let the white folks stay. But meanwhile, down in Montgomery, it was some Bamas that had enough. <coughs> so they stepped out on the good foot, and the whole city started riding the bus. So Bamas over in Selma and Birmingham started doing some similar things. And they were led by our Bama preacher, was, we called him Dr. Martin Luther King. There was <coughs> a whole bunch of other Bamas, like Mega Evans. That thought we died for all our civil rights endeavors. It was Bama's that suffered the most that have changed this world. The Little Rock Nine and them four little girls. From Dred Scott to Montgomery Bus Boycott, we indebted to some Bama's for all we got. Who taught us to struggle? Who made us yearn to be free? If it weren't for some Bama's, what would black folks really do? Now, ultimately, you're going to believe what you want. But when it comes to music, art, culture, sports, whatever, recognize what we didn't achieve. 
If you don't believe a word I'm saying, you can check in one of my facts. And then while you're at it, go and ask your grandma what she learned to cook like that. <laughs> so, in closing, I want to say Alabama, hard working country swag, crusty feet, and dirty cubes. Born and bred in that red dirt clay, and it was the blood of my ancestors that made it that way. So till you get some rosewood, some Colfax, some Tulsa, or some Tuskegee experiments, you start using that word family like a term of indifference. Your survival is determined by the strength of your genes. When you keep them shy jobs, I'm going to roll with my dog Reed. Good job.